Where do good ideas come from? In which situations do they most likely occur? Can you go hunting for great ideas? In this video, I will distill information from a book I read recently called Where Good Ideas Come From by Steven Johnson. From podcasts I listen to, mostly episode 340 of the POM podcast, where Anthony Pompliano interviews Greg Eisenberg, a Canadian internet entrepreneur and venture capitalist, and some near scientific studies that reinforce the relevance of the statements I will make. Definitely stay until the end. I will share some practical information I recently learned that had a tremendous effect on recent projects and is the source of many great ideas I recently had. I've been struggling to come up with good ideas to build apps, write songs or make YouTube videos but never really had that eureka moment, that one idea that knocks it out of the park. But maybe this line of thought is exactly what's preventing me from coming up with a great idea. You see, our brains don't react well to intimidation. Did you ever find yourself setting huge goals on New Year's Eve like running a marathon or reading one book per week the following year and then missing them by a landslide? I know I have. If you set goals that are far too ambitious and vague, you are far more likely not to reach them. If you try to reinvent the wheel, you end up not doing anything because nothing would be good enough anyways. How to solve this problem? Simple. Start small. Set a time limit for how long you want to do a specific task, like doing research and thinking about a particular topic, and then stop after that time is up. Repeating this process consistently will slowly turn creative thinking into a habit, and your brain loves habits. Creativity is like a muscle that you can train and that gets better the more practice that you have. Studies have shown that creative brains are wired differently. They are able to engage brain regions that don't typically work together. Oftentimes I find that ideas appear in my head when I'm doing something else like reading or during yoga. Therefore I always have a notebook lying next to me where I can write everything down that comes to my mind. When I'm not at home, I write down my ideas in a dedicated note on my phone. Now you have scheduled some time during your day where you engage in some kind of creative activity. What else can you feed your brain? How about surrounded by other creative machineries? The author of the book calls this immersing yourself in liquid networks. Immerse yourself in a world that fosters innovation. It was shown that innovative people usually have a larger network of people they engage with. A great concept to illustrate this idea is to imagine your world as a bubble with a certain surface area. This is what comes into contact with the outer world, physically and digitally. The goal is to increase your surface area and with that the number of encounters that you have. The more your thoughts collide with other people's thoughts, the higher the chances of these collisions resulting in ideas. There's a beautiful word mentioned in the book, serendipity, meaning happy accidents. Oftentimes great ideas come out of lucky encounters. Now you can't generate luck, but you can increase the amount of encounters that you have and thus your chances for luck to take its course. I tend to be quite introverted, preferring moments of calmness alone in my home to large gatherings. I've taken some steps to change that by starting to interact digitally over Twitter and YouTube and also in the real world by joining entrepreneur meetups. There are many reasons why I love starting this YouTube channel. The possibility to create content about things I care about and enabling me to interact with like-minded people is definitely all the way up there. The author highlights that being part of a network of creative people makes your mind more innovative itself because it shares the same network signature. To produce a new idea, neurons arranged in a specific network fire for the first time ever in that constellation. That's where more hard work comes into play. Learning new things, reading, listening to podcasts and YouTube videos, all of these things create new connections in your brain that you can use as your creative library or idea space as the innovation scholar Richard Over called it. Sometimes a new technique can migrate from one idea space to another via your newly established liquid network and unveil new and unexpected properties and a great idea. Steve Jobs learned calligraphy, which helped Apple pioneer typefaces on the first personal computer, and his love for music enabled him to spot the opportunity to develop the iPod. On that note, a study investigating recurrent habits of Nobel laureates has shown that they have significantly more and deeper interests than the average scientist, making them less specialized as one might think. They often cite their hobbies as part of their creative process. 
Sometimes it's beneficial to master a task really well, but in terms of creativity, entertaining your brain with new things and activities increases the number of connections that your brain can make. Remember, if you only read the books that everyone else is reading, you can only think what everyone else is thinking, as the Japanese author Haruki Murakami puts it. The amount of combinations, though, increases exponentially with every book or podcast you add to your brain library. Elon Musk famously, famously spent days sometimes reading several books in one session across various subjects such as physics, philo philosophy, science fiction and programming. It makes sense that to come up with a good idea, the more connections that you build by learning, being curious and observant, the more different combinations you can generate, thus increasing your level of creativity. The brain has roughly 100 billion neurons, with an average of 1000 connections per neuron, giving a grand total of 100 trillion neuronal connections, the most complex network on Earth. Larger than the entirety of the World Wide Web, with 400 billion different connections, or the smartest AI yet, GPT-3, with 175 billion. Which is very interesting, by the way, you should check it out, link is in the description. Personally, I aim at reading two to three books per month across different disciplines to purposely widen my perspective. The idea of reading more than one book at once paired with consuming podcasts and YouTube is key. The author of the book draws from a concept called exaptation, which evolutionary biologists propose to describe the hijacking of a trait and organism optimized for specific use for a completely different function. Sometimes you connect an idea to something you read in a totally different context, turning it into something essentially new. Another way to open up your idea space is by being a curious observer. Observe objects, situations and everyday encounters and ask yourself questions. Why is this product designed like this? Can this process be optimized? Would somebody love any service created on top of an existing one? Try to find relationships between things. Eric Schmidt, the former Google CEO, finds after years of experimentation that the quality that matters the most is curiosity. But how can you best draw from all these newly built connections? Evidence shows that putting your brain in a new, unusual space sparks new ideas. Low levels of ambient noise have been shown to increase creative thinking. You might want to put in a stop at a local coffee place or restaurant or go to a park after work. This is also an unmistakable message for your brain that the next 30 to 60 minutes will be dedicated to working on something new. Whereas at home, your brain might just get into comfy couch mode waiting for you to turn on the next episode of Selling Sunsets. This concept is so widely supported that it was given the name coffee house model. So now you sit here in this coffee house armed with your idea space and your notebook, maybe a pen and your iced coffee is warming up. Now what? As I mentioned in the beginning, we cannot expect ourselves to reinvent the wheel. We can make use of exaptation though. This concept was powerfully put to use by Anthony Pompliano and Greg Eisenberg during episode 340 of the POM podcast. He proposes to look into thriving companies such as Slack or Fiverr, offering a bundle of products and services and build verticals from them. This means unbundling their services, choosing one of them and build on top of that. Improve it, add new features, make it an overall better user experience. You can do this either in the context of software using code or low-code approaches or with physical products. One example of a feature built on top of Slack is Donut.com, which companies can use to connect employees working on different projects or teams to socialize and exchange ideas they wouldn't have shared if it wasn't for that product. Great products have been built on top of existing ones. The Gutenberg Press, responsible for printing books instead of copying one by one by hand enabling mass communication, was accepted from a wine press. A platform for sharing research in a hyperlink format designed by Tim Berners-Lee was accepted for online shopping and sharing photos on what we now call the internet. And Sergey Brin and Larry Page used links between different websites as digital votes to build a ranking platform they later named Google. You can have a great idea and team, but if there's no market, you will fail. That's why Greg Eisenberg should suggest to use high traffic platforms such as Reddit and look for trending subreddits. There are even websites giving you insider information about topics many people are looking for, such as redditlist.com. One example of such a niche can be a ride-sharing subreddit. People discuss their issues with offering ride-sharing services, offering themselves as a potential customer, telling you exactly what they need. 
A product you could offer could be a ride sharing starter kit like this one. You can ask inside the subreddit if they would like this product or even advertise your service after this build. Another subreddit with high traffic is Battle Station, where people show off their gaming gear, computer screens, audio systems and so on. What you could offer would be several levels of starter kits for people into that, ranging from a basic set to a high-end luxury set or a work from home starter kit where you offer bundles so that people don't have to invest time and energy into what they need for their home office setup. Whatever it may be, you can start for from the customer and build your product from there. An additional thought I found interesting in this podcast dealing with where the world is going Uh, Greg Eisenberg says that people are transitioning from wanting to put stuff out there on platforms such as Twitter or Instagram to paying for spending time inside and belonging to a community such as Slack communities, Discord chats, Fortnite worlds, virtual niche places. It might be worth spending time to build products for these trending markets. To finish, I want to add one more thing. Even the best idea can create meaningful value if it is not converted into reality. The phrase that helped me the most is done is better than perfect. And with that, I want to thank you very much for watching. If you like my content, please subscribe and leave a comment. Thanks.